Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the first episode of Bolstering Bolton. I'm your boy Bob, and there are a lot of alliterations in this episode, so try to keep up with all the Bs. But in all seriousness, thank you for tuning in to our channel. I am one of the fellow Roundtable of Wraith members with Chris, Jim, Ryan, and Mark. Um, so pull up a seat to the table. Let's talk about Sir Bolton. Um, I was drawn to Bolton kind of out of the out the gate. Um, I played a lot of Dorinthia in the first couple sets, so the warrior dynamic is something that definitely appeals to me. Um, it's kind of an all gas, no breaks. We're gonna punch you in the chin and try and take you out in, in the legs too if we can. You know, it's all damage, not a lot of defense reactions and whatnot. So, you know, I definitely that fits my style of play. Um, so that's definitely something that I looked at when I was trying to choose one of these new characters. Um, Bolton is super cool, you know, again, he's just like Dorinthia, we're running pretty much all attacks. Um, the only difference is we're not really relying on the weapon, that, so to speak, and, you know, that's a good tie-in to the weapon that we chose in this particular deck. Um, so we are running Raiden, and uh, Raiden, you know, zero cost, once per turn, as long as you've charged, he gets plus three. So. I think, and this is my belief, and I think my team, or the round table of Wraith, and a lot of people are starting to realize, I think Bolton is really only competitive with Raiden. And the only reason is, um, the axes, you know, I kind of dabbled with them in the beginning. I think it, they're just kind of underwhelming. And it takes a lot more uh, setup to make the axes, you know, feasible. And the only reason I say that is because you can have a phenomenal turn with one resource for the deck that I have, and then you can just swing Raiden right for free at the end, just as a little kind of sprinkle on top. Um, versus with the axes, you need to pay for each time you swing the axe, and it is one resource each time. So um, not to dive too far ahead, but in, my, in this specific deck, there is only one blue. You can't do that if you're running the axes. You need more blues to pay for each, you know, you want to charge, that's maybe going to cost you a resource. Then you got to swing the axes, that's going to cost you a resource. And by that point, you're already at three resources. So, you know, this deck kind of doesn't rely on heavy blues and heavy resources. So um, if you're doing the axes, that's not the wrong thing. Don't get me wrong. I'd be curious to see how you build it different. This is a good kind of skeleton to maybe use. I mean, the Axe build will probably use a lot of the same cards because we're trying to do, uh, and you'll hear me say this a couple times, PPC, Pitch, Play, Charge. And we're pitching a card, play, playing a card, and then we want to charge as many times, hopefully each turn. And so that's at least cutting three of your cards out. So, I mean, maybe you have access to five with one in the arsenal, but you're definitely going to want to try and, you know, do as much charging as possible to kind of fit the mold of what we're trying to do with his his whole mechanic. So that's kind of a long explanation. I think Raiden's really good. In terms of the equipment, um, I am running kind of some of the elite equipment, Arcanite Skullcap, kind of a generic like that a lot of decks are using. And it's basically, you know, the Arcane Barrier stuff, that's not really, it's not in there for that. It's more so just to have access to blocking a total of possibly three damage, two and then one as long as you have less health. Uh, Brave Forge Bracers, again, we're not using it for the ability. We're simply using it just to block three damage again, two and then one. Um, the Tunic, this is the money maker of the deck, I think. Aside from the Snapdragon Scalers giving you go again, which you will need at times when you're in a pinch. But th the Tunic is immensely important. And I will kind of emphasize it with, again, you can do so much on your turn with simply one resource, whether that's like a via the vanguard into crazy charging abilities, whether that's paying for the take flight to give you go again for free. I mean, you can on the tu the turns where you have the tunic resource, it's almost like, hey, it's Christmas Day. You have this resource at your expense. Go nuts with it. Let's see what you can do. Because now you don't have to pitch, play, charge. You just have to play and charge. So it's leave giving you another card in your hand to potentially charge with, to potentially, you know, do another action, or to maybe pay for something else, put it over the top. Um, so that's why, like, the tunic is great. Um, I know I've been talking to Chris, and he runs kind of a more, like, affordable, or like a 
we we're calling it like the budget build, and I, I should have included those cards, I apologize, but he's running the, uh, I'm blanking on what it is, it's the cross strap, where if you break it, it gives you two resources. And that's kind of like the same thing, you know, in a pinch, you get access to two resources. I think that's totally cool, and that's totally reasonable, because you just want to basically either have something that gives you something to block with, which in a pinch, the tunic also gives you that too, um, it's a feel bad if you're like at three, but if you're at one and you're about to die, why not? You're not going to probably make it to get to the three again. So I would say if you choose a chess piece and the budget build, that's not the tunic or even not some of the other things like the Brave Forge Bracers, the Arcanite, I would say try to give yourself something that at least blocks for damage. Um, and the only reason is because and that gives you the ability to maybe not, you know, pitch a card to defend with because we are going to try not to defend as much as possible and the only reason is we just need to outpace the opponent because we need as many cards in our hand as possible to try and outgas the opponent um so with that being said i mean we all obviously also have the null rune stuff in there in case you come across wizard um like kano um if you're playing a rune blade i don't know if you necessarily need that much um null rune stuff i would say you need to have the tunic, so that's why we're not even putting the the null rune uh, robe in there. Um, you need the Snapdragon scalers, probably. The things you could probably afford to get away with is you can probably do just do the gloves and then the hood if you needed to for if you're playing wiz or uh, rune blade. So enough about the equipment. Let's kind of go into the deck and like the cards that we have in it. Um, down here out before i go to the other side we do run one remembrance i think this is super important um only from the standpoint you only need one and you're just trying it's there in case you let's say outgas yourself or you have to pitch you know the gas in the beginning to like defend or if you needed to you know you you've already played both of your you know your cataclysms or you've gotten a couple of your via the vanguards out there and you want to get them back um, it's there for that reason, just to get those like kind of gas cards um, back into your hand. And hey, if you don't need it, like if the game's going in your favor, it's a yellow pitch. So that again, that can fuel an entire turn. And so I think it's got good value. The one downside, it does not block. But like I said, we're not really trying to block too much. So yeah, I think Remembrance, at least one, is a must in our deck. Because our action cards are the bread and butter, and we need as many of them as we can. Just kind of going down the list. Um, actually, you know what? I lied. We're not going to go down the list because we're not going to start with Battlefield Blitz because you're never going to start your turn with Battlefield Blitz unless it's end game and you can't. You need to just do five damage. Um, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself and I'm sorry. The best. Well, there's a there's a lot of good cards in this deck. I want to start with Take Flight really quick. You're running all three colors of all three of each three colors of Take Flight period the end you need them all and this is a great card because you know we'll go on the red one for a second the red one gives you you know for one resource you know it allows you to charge it allows you to i mean attack for pretty decent value you get to do four damage on the blue and it gives you go again for free that's amazing because you know there you will find yourself in a lot of times and you'll play against um experienced like opponents who will kind of know that they'll know when you can and cannot go again and let's say like you attacked with like an express lightning and you charge and you're like hoping that they defend just to boost your attack and they don't well now what are you going to do now you you know you're kind of in a pickle do i break the snapdragon scalers is it too early for that or do you you know maybe you have like an attack reaction like a razor or you have a courageous steel hand to like put it over the top um, but if you don't, you're pretty much just kind of stuck and you're going to do that damage and then pass it back. So I think take flight takes that, takes that, um, uh, issue out of the equation by just giving you the free go again. Like, and it's, that's a no brainer. I'm going to attack you for four. If you block it, cool. If you don't, I'm going to still go again, no matter what. And so I think that that's what, that's why this card is super important for Bolton because we're trying to go as wide as we can just to keep punching damage in. Um, so that's why I wanted to start with Take Flight. It's a great card. If you get the red one, I mean, I think unless you have like a Via the Vanguard, this is going to be your starting starting point. And I think it's just an easy decision for you. And I think you just go and just see what happens. 
Um, so I wanted to start with Take Flight. Um, while we're down here, we'll talk about Via the Vanguard. Via the Vanguard is incredible. And this this card, I've I've seen opponents get super frustrated with it. And you know, having it played against me, I'm it's I see why. I mean, this card is insane. Again, for one resource, you can charge as many number of times as you want to buff your attacks pretty much as the number of times you've charged. Um, so usually, I mean, you're at least doing one just to kind of give the go again ability on Bolton, uh, kind of make it live. Um, dare I say you even charge twice. I mean, you're doing some nasty things. And I have definitely seen, um, and I, we talked about this in our Bolton kind of breakdown episode, where let's say you have V in the arsenal, the tunics at three, it's the best day ever. You use the tunic resource to pay for V. You charge twice. And now you have still access to two other cards in your hand. So you're attacking with V for five. You give it go again because you charge twice. You then play an Enlightened Strike from your hand for nine because you're choosing the plus two option. You get attack for the nine, the plus two from the charge from V. So now you're attacking for nine, bottoming that fourth card to allow you to play in goal. Or, um, Enlightened Strike, I mean, that's nine. And then you get to swing Raiden, you know, just a casual zero cost Raiden for five. That's an insane turn. You've just done 19 damage, potentially 21 if they decided to block any of it with an attack action card. Insane. All of that for one resource. That is insane value. Via the Vanguard is crazy because of its ability to put his action attack reaction online at all times and give it go again. And you just buff every attack. I will say the only caveat to this is if you cannot break the chain with Lumina. So do not waste a Lumina turn with a Via the Vanguard turn because it will shut off the chain because it is an action, not an, not an attack. So you're not getting the buff twice. You're not getting the Via the Vanguard buff as well as the Lumina buff. So just as an aside, don't do that. Um, you will definitely your opponent might catch you up on it and you might be disappointed at that result so again yeah via the vanguard awesome incredible card um that'll kind of lead us in now we'll go down so battlefield blitz you know great value this is kind of the you play this after you've charged and you know it gives you this is another example of giving yourself go again for free that you don't have to worry about you know pitching something in the soul waiting for your opponent to block breaking the snapdragon scalers the only requirement is as long as you've charged, I mean, and let's say like you have, you pitch a yellow, you play a take flight for the one resource, and then you have a resource left over, hey, let's play Battlefield Blitz. That's, that seems good. And then you get to attack with Raiden for free. I mean, that's two resources that allows you to do, let's if it was the red take flight, four, then this Battlefield Blitz, five, and then Raiden for three, that's nine plus three, so you're at 12 now. And if they blocked, oh man, that's 15. I mean, he just does so much for so little money and or so little uh, resources. It's insane value. Battlefield Blitz is kind of, I would say its cousin is, and I'm going to jump down here, and it's, it's Valiant Thrust. We're thrusting valiantly, as we like to say. Um, and this one is, you know, like, again, a one resource card. We love that. It's affordable. Um, this card is four, and usually you only play this after you've charged. I just look at this card as a seven because I, I try to never play it, and I think I've maybe played it once where it was just the straight up four, and it was because I was kind of desperate at the end game of just being just trying to punch through damage. But I usually only play this card with the seven, um, and I think it's just I mean seven for one. That's great value, and so again, this one doesn't give you the go again, so you know. Is Battlefield Blitz better because you get to swing the sword after? Or is Valiant Thrust better because you just get to thrust valiantly? I don't know. I think, you know, they both have a place in the in the deck. Um, as long as you play them after you've charged, I don't think either one's a wrong decision. So I run three of both of those. Um, and then we're going to kind of get into the other cards that are, you know, they're affordable. I think they're all pretty much zeros uh, with the exception of a few. But Bolt of Courage... Great card, allows you to charge, um, and if it hits, draws a card. That's great. I mean, now you're threatening, you know, potentially going again and getting a card back into your hand to do more shenanigans. I mean, your opponent probably doesn't want you to do that, especially if you have, 
like the ability to go again, um, they don't want you to get another card to just fuel the attack or get another attack action. And it's zero cost. So I only run the reds. Um, and the reason why I run only the red is because I think you want to you want to always threaten possibly going over the top. Like if someone blocked, like the yellow one is only three damage. And if someone blocked with an attack action card, that's putting it up to three. So you're not really putting anything over the top. And although the ability to get a card is really good, I think the red one is just the best one. And I think we're we're fitting enough other stuff in here that you know we we want to have those spaces open for other things. So I only run the red. Um, and that's kind of my opinion on that. Bolting Blade is like kind of a, oh, it's an interesting card. I've gone back and forth with this one many a times. I, it definitely is in the sideboard for matchups like Prism because you need, we don't have too many attacks that are going over six to Phantasm or turn off uh, the Phantasm ability. So this is definitely one of the few that can do that. So that's why you definitely run all three of them. You know, you at least have them in the sideboard for your access. But, you know, in terms of other matchups, I really only run... I've been running one, and, you know, you can make an argument for two. I, I like only running one because it's kind of a situational card. And the only reason I say that is because you're usually only going to play this. You're never going to pay the four to just do seven. That doesn't make sense in our build. I look at this card as you're either paying nothing if you had the the dream hand of via the Vanguard charge twice and play this for free. I've gotten it off maybe once or twice in the whole, all the times I've played Bolton. So I kind of look at this as, like I said, a zero cost in that dream scenario or you're paying two for it. And, you know, two for seven, we, we can do better than that. So that's why I don't really like paying the two for this because you know I'd, I'd rather pitch the t this for two resources and potentially do more stuff kind of go wider um, and that's kind of why I think this is kind of a niche card um, it's not bad by any standpoint because if you get the dream scenario I actually just played a game um, and I was able to pull it off so that was you know sweet but again very few and far between that you'll be able to do that so um, definitely run it against prism probably only need one or two against everyone else celestial cataclysm again it's a no-brainer card you're going to include this my only critique with this card is don't play it early and the only reason for that is we need to have as much as many cards in our soul as we can and the worst thing that you can do is you know have three cards in your soul that you worked so hard to get to you know it, it at least took you you know it could have taken you maybe two turns with if you had a V and you charge twice, but it at least takes you probably three turns to get to that. Um, and for you to just say, hey, we're just gonna do seven, get rid of all that soul, it's good, because you do have the built-in go again, which we love. However, you're now kind of hindering your abilities to potentially go again later. Um, and you're also not threatening potential lethal with a um, beacon of victory, which we'll get to in a little bit. But um, so I think, the, the happy spot that you want to wait to play this is either mid-game, definitely late game, because if you have no other cards in hand except for this and you've charged a bunch of times, like it's basically a free seven go again. Um, so I at least wait until I have at least four cards in soul before I play this. And even then, it's kind of a decision for me. Like I don't think, like I said, the having the, the cards in the soul to put you on access to go again is more important than just getting a one time seven. So um, just think twice before you just automatically play this. Um, you know, I just keep that in mind. Um, but again, great card. And the art is super beautiful. So that's cool. Command and Conquer. Um, we've said this before. I think Chris said it best. This card is a great, in a vacuum, this card is just phenomenal. It's just a great card. If you're like playing the competitive scene, I think you definitely need this. And it's just too good to not like have in your deck. Sure, do we hate the two cost? We do. However, if you're playing against certain decks that rely on, you know, like big cards that they keep hidden in the arsenal, or if your opponent has something in the arsenal and you want to just, you know, take it offline, this is a great card to play. 
um, because now it makes it puts them in kind of a sticky situation to if they really want to block it or not. So, you know, this doesn't really fit our our, our team or our build on our like mechanic of charging, but I think its value is one of the few exceptions that will allow to kind of uh, supersede that. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, I mean, it's yeah, and it's six of cost, so it's helping with. Um, with uh, prism so that's obviously good too it blocks for three um it's just an all-around good card and i don't need to belabor that anymore um cross the line is one of the few that we actually have to pay for so it's kind of a you know ooh, we have to pay for this one now that's kind of like you know not great but it's doing five damage and it allows you to charge so like in a pinch if you didn't have something that gives you the charge ability you know this is a great kind of fallback um five damage again it's one that puts you over the top i used to run the yellow ones because of that same reason that you know four became a five this one five can potentially become a six as long as you've charged and they defend with an attack react or an attack card um it basically came down to i was just trying to cut more stuff and i just cut the yellow ones out so um are you wrong for running the yellow by no means no I think you know it's totally reasonable, and you can totally make an argument for it. But I personally just run the red, um, and it's just a just vanilla text of charging. So that's about it for that card. Um, Engulfing light, awesome card, zero cost. We love that. Attacks for three, potentially four, can put you over the top. We love that too. And if it hits, it goes into your soul. My gosh, and it blocks for three. It can't get any better than that. I mean, this card is awesome. I mean, for you to have the ability to refuel your soul if you spend it um and when i say that i mean you play this card you charge with its ability um and then they block with an attack card and you puts it over the top i mean you could just with the card you just charged with pitch it go again and if as long as this hits it goes into the soul so you're almost it's almost like a perpetual loop and it's helping itself so yeah i think this is a great card again we're only running the red because of the three possibly becoming a four I think the yellow one, I don't really necessarily think you need it. Um, Enlightened Strike, again, this is just a great card. It's a zero cost. The only requirement is you have to bottom a card in your hand. So um, its ability to give it plus two puts, as long as you've charged, it puts Bolton's ability online to you know give it go again, um, just based on the card itself. So um, always choose, well, I shouldn't say always. Most of the time, you're going to choose the plus two ability as long as you've charged. Um, and again, this is just a great card. I don't need to belabor Enlightened Strike anymore. Express Lightning um, is a card that I, you know, have, again, it's vanilla because it just only allows you to charge, but it's a zero cost, four damage, three damage on the yellow. You're going over the top with either one. This is just fitting all of our requirements. Um, so that's good there. Illuminate is another kind of, you know, although we're not charging, with illuminate we are um filling our soul which our opponent you know if they're experienced they don't want you to do they don't want you to get too high on the soul so um this one you know four on the red three on the blue you're going over the top each time uh so you gotta love that and it's a zero cost um these cards are probably the best early um and i say these cards by illuminate you know express lightning um let's see battle or not battlefield blitz bolt of courage those cards are great early, and I say that because if you play these cards and your opponent says, you know what, I'm not going to block, um, I'll just take the three damage, you don't feel as bad by just having that be your turn. And, you know, you've charged, you've done that, you've done your due diligence, you put through damage, um, so what if you don't get to go again? It's when it gets to be late game that you need to punch more damage in, and you play these, and they're like, well, you know what, I can take three damage. That's when you're kind of really in a pinch of like well how do i get to go again you know do i break the scalers then so if you have these in the beginning illuminate express lightning you know bolt of courage i i think it's okay to play them early um obviously if you have the take flights do that too but i mean if that's all you got hey that's not a bad turn as long as you've charged you're still in the game so don't don't lose hope um we talked about take flight we talked about via the vanguard we talked about valiant th or thrusting valiantly. Rally the rear guard is something I literally just put in right before this uh, taping, um, and the only reason I was trying to find other cards to kind of for to help with the prism matchup um, to help us get to the six, 
I would probably this is a card that would probably sideboard out um, for most matchups, and it's only in there for Prism. But you know, you could maybe make an argument. We don't run a lot of defense reactions. Um, if it's someone that maybe is like a really tall deck, like uh, Bravo or even Leviah, maybe you could put this in there. And you know, you're blocking two. Um, you could potentially pitch another card to block more damage. You know, it's it's up to you. This was again. Don't really have a lot of XP with Rally the Rear Guard. I think it was in one of my first versions. I took it out for a while, um, and I think it's just in there only for the sideboard against Prism or those uh, really tall decks. Now, Beacon of Victory. My gosh, this card has won me so many games. And guys, if you don't have this card and you're running Bolton, please go buy it right now because this card is insane. For zero cost, as long as you have one card in your soul you potentially can i mean put any attack over the top you can potentially lethal kill somebody and they don't see it coming um i've seen and, and you get to go search for a card so again let me break this card down as an additional cost to play beacon of victory banish x cards from your soul x cards can't be zero target attack gains plus x holy smokes I can't tell you, I've had a couple games where I've had at least six cards in the soul. My opponent just, you know, let me do the illu or the illuminates, you know, the engulfing lights, and I just kept throwing cards in my soul. Never hit the celestial cataclysms that I was looking for. Which, and then I drew this card, and um, my opponent, I, I had had it in the arsenal, basically waiting for the moment to kind of go over the top. And my opponent was smart, it was actually against Jim. Um, and he knew that he was like, you probably have Beacon in the arsenal. And he just kept defending big time. Um, and he actually saved himself by doing that because I was just going to just do a generic vanilla attack for four and then just Beacon him to death. Um, so at least your opponent's probably smart in that. But this card is awesome. And let's say you do get to, it hits and you've charged before playing it. You get to now search for a card. So now I think... You know, assuming that you've charged, which you probably have, and then you play this card, you know, you can go and search for like a Valiant Thrust, which is only a one resource card, or you can go for the Battlefield Blitz, again, one resource, or I mean, you know, could you go for the Cataclysm? Sure, if you want, but I mean, like these cards are the ones that you're searching for, um, and again, it's just the ability to like punch through damage, uh, as long as you have a resource available. I think these are incredible options and beacon of victory is just an insane card so i know i keep saying that i apologize i'm getting a little little emotional this card is near and dear to my heart um speaking of another near and dear card to my heart we'll jump ahead to lumina ascension um great card you know we don't really use the weapon too often we don't really use raiden however this is one of the few exceptions um until the end of the turn weapons you control gain plus one so now you know, Bolton's abilities online. And if it hits, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a light card, which chances are it will be, um, put it into your soul and gain a health back. Otherwise, bottom the card. And if you've charged this turn, you may attack an additional time with each weapon you control. Obviously, this card was probably meant for the axe build, but for us with Raiden, I mean, a zero cost Lumina Ascension, assuming we've charged, we get to attack twice with Raiden. I mean, that's great value. And you're potentially getting health back. So all in all, this is an also great card. Um, again, don't play this after playing via the Vanguard. Um, so, and then just kind of wrapping up the last couple of cards, Courageous Steel Hand, a zero cost attack reaction to help you kind of go over the top, put Bolton's ability online, give you go again, and or punch damage through. This is just, I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's a good attack reaction card. Razor Reflex, I think the, only play the red ones of this one. Um, sure, it is a, a one resource. Hopefully, maybe you have the, the Tunic resource at your expense to pop this off. Um, but, I mean, it gives you uh, plus three on the sword. And it also gives you, you know, if it's an attack action card, it gives you the go again as long as it hits. So, I mean, you have a couple ways to get to the go again, um, whether that be, you know, putting it over the top, if it hits going again, um, so I think that's definitely something, uh, an appealing factor of Razor Reflex. Another kind of sneaky play that uh, Ryan kind of had told me about is uh, two sneaky things he actually told me about. Hmm, he's pretty sneaky, isn't he? Um, one is playing Razor Reflex. So basically you swing Raiden 
if you haven't charged, just end your turn and swing raid in. And lets your opponent kind of, like you're basically baiting your opponent into thinking, does he have the razor? Is he going to play it? Like off of, I mean, Raiden's zero right now because he hasn't charged. Maybe you just play Razor then and just do three. That's, you know, is it, the, is it a good play? I mean, it's sneaky. Um, you can definitely catch your opponent off guard. Um, but it also is something that really makes your opponent think and like they're going to maybe, maybe pitch a card to, you know, defend a zero attack Raiden. Um, the other sneaky play that I just thought about, Ryan, that told me, because he plays Prism, um, is that you can attack with Raiden uh, swinging for zero against some of the auras. So, you know, if you want to get an aura out of the way, just, you know, swing Raiden for zero, and then you still, you're not wasting any necessarily, you're not wasting any cards to do that. So if he's got an aura out there that you want to get rid of, um, just swing Raiden for zero, your turn's over, but it's not, it's almost not a feel bad at that point. Um, last two cards to talk about, Soul Shield, you need all three. Again, we're not running too many defense reactions, um, but this card helps us in so many ways. Uh, sure, you're paying two for it, but you're charging your soul in the and you're blocking damage. So, it, you know, although it's kind of, you know, it's a tricky spot to be in to block two, or sorry, to pay two, uh, you are blocking six damage and it's going into your soul. So it's almost not a feel bad on your turn if you're not um, charging your soul and if you're only doing one attack. So definitely need all, all three soul shields. And then Sink Below... Um, I actually, this was another card I just kind of threw in before this episode. I think, you know, it's definitely a, a worthwhile uh, sideboard card just to have more defense reactions because, again, we're not really, you don't re really necessarily need um, defense reactions against all matchups. Some of them, again, like Chain, you know, you it's almost you want to try and block as much damage as you can. So I would maybe side this sideboard this in against some of our tougher matchups. Um, and then otherwise, if you think you can outgas the opponent, just take this out. You don't necessarily need it. So all in all, guys, that's the deck. Again, uh, mostly reds. We have 41 red cards, 28 yellows, and three blue, three pitchers. Um, in terms of cost, uh, uh, like I said, a large majority is one cost. We only have, you know, our uh, four costers. Uh, we only have a couple, and that's just the... Uh, what was it called? Bolting Blade. So, I don't know. I mean, that's uh, that's the deck, and I hope you guys like it. Um, feel free to leave comments. I hope I didn't mess up, you know, kind of going over these cards or my explanations. I, I get super excited about Bolton. He's definitely my favorite character in the set. I am kind of interested in going back to uh, some of the other characters, but let me know what you think about our uh, Bolton build. Uh, leave comments below, like and subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you for tuning in to the Roundtable of Wraith. This is your boy Bob signing off. Take care, guys.